This video promises zero satisfaction. Uh, the only thing which I really accomplished was um, lengthening the rods on my AnyCubic Castle, which probably I did not need to do, but it might be an interesting process if you want to see how I did that. The other thing I'm going to go over is the problems that I'm having uh, probably in firmware, although I don't know where the problem's really coming from, but uh, I'm having problems getting the BL Touch auto mesh bed leveling algorithm to work. The BL Touch sensor is installed and working well. Uh, the software, the, the firmware seems to be working well, but there's uh, kind of an insidious problem that I can't quite crack. So yeah, if you're not into the sort of long drawn out process explaining those two things, then you might want to go watch another one of my videos. I'll put one right here in the title card. So yeah, without any more delay, let's get into it. Here are the six rods from my AnyCubic Castle Delta printer. Now the, uh, the construction design on these things is pretty good. Um, those are carbon fiber tubes with an outer diameter of five millimeters. And these are um, just steel eyelets. And I know they're steel because I have a magnetized piece of, or magnetized uh, Allen key here and you can see it sticks. So um, not aluminum, which would be, uh, you know, bad for wear and tear. Um, the steel will last quite a long time. Now the problem is you never know, I mean you always have to doubt the quality of the components that come from China. So um, I'm having some problems with the, with the Delta printer with the auto mesh bed leveling and I doubt that these are the correct length. So what I've got here are two calipers and I'm just going to use them as a straight edge on either side and if I pinch these between each other they should all be the same length so there should be no movement. But you can see there's movement. So like this one will slide, that one's held perfectly. That one's got a little bit of wiggle. That one's got quite a bit of wiggle. That one's got a lot of wiggle. I would say a millimeter or more. And that one's, um, well, like, okay, so yeah, that one's still, that one's held firm. So yeah, um, I have no way to measure uh, what, what, what is actually critical and that is the distance from the uh, hole to the hole. And that is because um, these ball joints can move around quite a bit. And so it's just, it's a really difficult task to just sort of dynamically measure that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remake these uh, with a jig so that I know they're, they're correct. So this is my uh, Creality CR10 uh, printer. This is a brand new printer to me and I love this thing. Um, anyway, what we're printing on this printer right now is the jig for uh, the rods when we re-glue them. So this is one of the rods off of my uh, AnyCubic Castle printer. And as you saw, they are not the correct length. Well, they don't all match, which is the most important thing. So we're gonna re-glue all of them using that same one jig. So we know that they will all be perfectly matched because they're all gonna be made off the same jig. Um, so the, what we need to do though is break loose one of these eyelets from the carbon fiber rod. And uh, what we could obviously uh, use to accomplish that is this bench vise. So I could just clamp that down and unscrew this. So this is threaded into a glued portion inside of the rod. But the problem is if I clamp directly metal onto carbon fiber, it's gonna break the carbon fiber, like for sure. So what we wanna do is put a little bit of padding there. Um, so I'm using this masking tape and I'm gonna put about four layers of masking tape on it. And you just wanna make sure that you do a really clean job uh, installing the masking tape. You don't want any wrinkles because uh, wrinkles are, are pressure points and pressure points lead to uh, breaking of the carbon fiber. So I'm just sort of, I got it started, nice straight line and that's one wrap, that's two wraps, that's three wraps and we'll put on four just for safety just to, to be sure. But you, it's possible to put on too many wraps. Um, I found that four wraps is a good number. So, okay. There's my, uh, there's my thing ready to go. So now I can clamp it into the jig, or I'm sorry, into the, into the bench vise here. And I'm gonna clamp gently, real gently there. Um, now I'm gonna grab my uh, spanner open end wrench, whatever you wanna call it, and get that tightened down onto that eyelet so it's ready to start spinning. Now, I'm gonna unthread this, so I'm spinning it counterclockwise, and I'm just watching this rod here, and I might put my hand on it, in fact. I can feel that I'm spinning the whole rod, 
So I'm gonna clamp that down a little bit more and then go some more. The whole rod is not spinning. Oh, the whole rod is spinning. So clamp it down just a little bit more. We're talking about a 16th of a turn, basically. And then try to spin it again. I'm still spinning the rod. Another 16th of a turn. Still spinning the rod. Another 16th of a turn. There we go. It's broken loose. So you really don't want to over tighten on that carbon fiber because uh, it's very easy to break. So now that that's broken loose, I can pull it out of the vise and I can get it out of there by hand. Now what I forgot to mention is uh, you can see the distance between the carbon fiber rod and the eyelet is very small here. At this end there was already some distance. So I went for the one that was least threaded in there because it's going to be a little easier to break loose. That also gives me uh, a little bit of, um, of extra room to, to really bury the rod down in there if it, uh, if it needs to happen. If it's not quite long enough or something, or if it's too long. Okay, so there's our eyelet. Here's our carbon fiber rod. And let's see if we can get this tape off without tearing the tape. Almost got it. Kind of tore it. Oh, look at that. Came off. Okay, very nice. Okay, so now we've got this... Uh, bit of glue sticking out the back and we want to just sand that down. Um, you might be able to break it off. In fact, that one broke off pretty nicely. But you want to sand down until you're at your carbon fiber rod. That's what you want to be seeing right there. Um, now, it would be great if this would slide right on into the hole, but of course it doesn't. So putting our digital calipers onto uh, this threaded section the threaded tail end. We see that this is 2.86, 2. yeah, 2.86, 2.8. Uh, that is basically a three millimeter, um, uh, three millimeter threads, thread pitch. So uh, we want a drill pit that's uh, as close to that as we can get. Now I'm here in America and it's kind of hard to get my hands on metric drill bits. So I've got this 7 64th inch drill bit and that measures 2.7576, so that's just smaller than that. But it's okay because um, as you're drilling out by hand, uh, this tends to wobble, and so you never get a hole that's precisely this big. Um, if you are in uh, another country where you can get metric drill bits, then probably still wanna use a smaller drill bit. 2.75 millimeter drill bit is still advisable. Uh, better too small than too big. So I'm just going to drill that hole out. And now that I've done that, what I'm going to do is sort of ream out the hole. So I'm pushing on the sides and then just clear that on out of there. Once I've done that, we can see that slides in there nicely. So ready for gluing. As soon as that jig is finished printing, we're going to clamp this in the jig and glue it up. Okay, so here's the jig as I've popped it off the printer. And I've made it so that the holes are just the perfect size, uh, so you don't need to drill them or tap them. You can just print them as they are, and these uh, three millimeter bolts uh, will thread right into them. So that's pretty convenient. Now what we want to do is uh, attach our um, non, not the end that we're that we're going to be gluing. We want to attach the other end. Actually, I guess it doesn't matter that much, but. Um, at any rate, we're going to attach one end here uh, onto our jig. Um, use our wrench. And now, uh, I don't know, I've made this, this jig the right size that you can print it uh, on a whole lot of uh, printers. So uh, a 220 millimeter bed will be able to print this thing if you print it uh, diagonally. So uh, you should be able to print it with almost any... Uh, unless you have one of those uh, really small 3D printers. Um, but obviously you won't be able to print it uh, with the uh, Cossel. So, okay, so that's that's gonna fit right on there just fine. We see that this threads in there beautifully as well. Uh, so we're not gonna have a problem with fitment. So now we just need to get the glue inside of there. So take that off there, take that off there. Um, now the glue we're gonna use is this Gorilla Glue 5-Minute Epoxy. Now you certainly don't need to go with the brand name, 
Um, you could go with uh, any old cheapo epoxy that you can find. I just like this stuff because of the plunger. It comes out in exactly the same uh, proportions. So you know that no matter how small of a mixture you're, you're making, it's gonna, work. it's gonna work for you. But because I've never used this tube before, uh, I'm gonna have to waste a little bit just to get it perfectly straight here. <clears throat> there we go. And now I'm ready to squeeze a little bit of it into this little tray here. Now I've made this tray from a, an egg carton. We have these fancy eggs we can buy. Anyway, I like, I like mixing up epoxy on uh, smooth plastic because it's just easier than mixing it up on paper. You tend to, uh, it tends to soak into the paper. So, okay, got, got my popsicle stick from the dollar store and I'm just gonna mix that epoxy together. And this is just five minute epoxy. So supposedly gonna dry in five minutes. Um, and because I wanna use the same jig for all of these, um, all these rods, um, I won't be able to do more than one at a time. So pretty much gonna have to mix this up six different times and attach to the jig six, six different times. So there's gonna be a little bit of epoxy waste here, but that's okay. It's not too expensive. Okay, that should be well mixed. And now let's just put that into the hole here. Trying to be as clean as possible. Uh, I could have wrapped the end of that with, um, I could have wrapped the end of that with uh, some tape. That probably would have been the smart thing to do. But I think if I'm careful, I can be clean enough. So now I'm just gonna coat the threads on the end of this. Um, so we've got glue everywhere where I can get some glue. I can see that the glue is actually uh, falling into the hole there, which is exactly what I want. Um, I probably have too much glue here. Really not necessary to have this thing on there like the, you know, like you're gonna hang thousands of pounds from, from the thing, but uh, you gotta get it in there good enough. Okay, well that one in there. Now let's just tear a piece of this, uh, paper towel off, and like I said, I'm getting a little bit of dripping. So I'm just gonna wipe off the drip. Come over here, set it on down, screw my, screw the little bolt right into the hole on the jig. And then tighten that down. Now you don't want to over tighten this because it is just going into plastic. So uh, you just strip it out. But now that we know is at 218 millimeters because that's what the jig was set up to and the printer was pretty accurate. And even if it's not 218 millimeters, it's still uh, going to be consistently the same, uh, the same length between all six of these. So the final thing to do before I let it just sit here and dry for five minutes is I need to line up the two eyelets. The two eyelets here, let's just do it, exaggerate it. They can twist. See, this one's facing down and this one's facing up, and that would be uh, bad. Uh, you want them to be lined up as good as possible. So one trick is to sort of just eyeball them right down the line like that. And if you can just, like a gun sight, you can see whether or not they're, they're in line. So those two are not quite there. That's better. That looks pretty good to me. All right, well, I'm just gonna let this sit here for five minutes. And what I'll do is I'll keep com coming back and checking this little, this glue right here, um, seeing if it's dry. And when this glue in the, in the egg carton dries, I'll know that the, the glue on the, uh, the glue in the hole has also dried. Okay, it's been uh, more than five minutes and um, touching this, uh, this here with my fingernail, this thick portion here, it's, uh, it's pretty rubbery, but um, it's dry enough. As long as I'm nice and don't you know, use any force on these, uh, they're not gonna go anywhere. So I have to let them still cure uh, sitting beside, but I do not need to have it in the jig anymore. So I'm just gonna take it out of the jig and get to the next one because I have five more to go.
Okay, it is the next day and the glue has, uh, the epoxy has hardened on all of these uh, rods now that I've remade them. And I know that they're all right because I made them all with the exact same jig. That's this one right here. And I can put this jig onto each one of the, uh, of the rods and it just slides right on there. So they are, they are doing pretty darn good. Um, I'd say there's, there's two that are a little bit tight, that one and that one. We'll put those two tight ones right here in the middle. And the rest of them are good. So yeah, they're, I mean, a little bit tight, but that's, so basically the holes and the, uh, and the bolt have about, I would say, a uh, 0.1 millimeter of play. Uh, it's not a huge amount, but it's enough. Uh, it could be problematic, but it's not, it's not problematic on the level of what I'm experiencing. So uh, it's good enough for now. Um, if I do what I was doing yesterday and I put the, the calipers on them, I can shake them back and forth and we find uh, massive amounts of play um, in these. Uh... Look at that one. That one's got so much play. And that one was one that fit the jig perfectly. So these two ends here are nice and tight. Um, but yeah, so what's going on there? Why, why are the outside measurements different from the inside measurements? What I think is happening is the ball ends uh, have like no lash, like they're nice and tight. And in order to achieve that, I think they're, they, they basically have to heat up this outer ring and, sh and cool down the ball so that the two can slip into each other because the things expand in the heat. So that expands, that shrinks, they slip them into each other. And then of course there's gonna be play. There's gonna be a little bit of wiggle. But if you feel this ball, there's, there's really no wiggle. So how did they, uh, how did they remove the lash, that, that wiggle? I think they grabbed each of these eyelets in a vise, just right here like this, and just squeezed it real hard with, a, with the vise. And that sort of just ovalized to the eyelet and it removes the lash. But as you over, ovalize the eyelet, you're also sort of pushing this end outward. So um, it's unreliable to measure these things from the outside because they've gone and, and done that, I think. So the bottom line is that all of my uh, six rods are now, uh, I've verified that they are uh, reasonably the same length. Now they can vary by perhaps um, as much as 0.1 millimeters uh, like that one, I was saying it's a, it's a little bit tight. So I suspect that uh, that's off by about 0.1 millimeters. Maybe as much as 0.2, because you could have a 0.1 and a 0.1 on either end. Um, but still, that's not enough of a discrepancy to account for the big problems that I'm having. And let's go take a look at that right now. Okay, so here we have the AnyCubic Castle printer. And over here on the computer, we have uh, the Arduino IDE running with the serial monitor. Now I've already done the G28 command to auto home. So let's run a G29 command and that is the auto mesh bed leveling uh, routine G code command. So it's gonna take these nine points here. And what we can see is that we get this sort of map, this nine, this nine grid map here of the points. So the two largest, the difference, the, the biggest difference in points is between this one, 2.21, 2.215 and 0 0.510. So if we get our calculator out over here and we go uh, 2.215 plus, because that's a negative 0 0.5, 0 0.510, we get 2.725. Now I'm absolutely consistent in that reading. I have, um, I have used a different, another BL touch sensor uh, just to test to see if the inaccuracy was coming from the sensor and it's not. It's, it's very, it's within 0 0.02 millimeters every time, the difference there between those. Um, just to give you guys a close-up view and better explain exactly what's going on here, uh, I've just restarted this printer and done the G28 uh, auto home. Now I will go G0, Z0 and this should, if my calibration was correct, this should be at zero. It should touch the board right there in the middle. And it's a little tight, but I can still, it's a little tight, but I can still slide that paper back and forth. And at 0.2, I'm hitting the bed. And at zero, I'm touching, 
It's not incredibly tight, but I am touching. So uh, that bed across the whole width there is within 0.2 millimeters, which is still not very good for actual printing, but that's only 0.2 millimeters off. That's really not very much. Now I'll take this out and I'll run a G29 command. Okay, so I'm at negative 0.3. So I'm already off from my original. So we're at positive three. So three millimeters. So we're already at between the middle of the bed and between the point where we are right now, we're at a 0.6 millimeter difference. We find that it's 0.5. So 0.5 to positive 0.2 means I'm off by 0.7 across that board. Um, so I really don't understand what's going on. So I've gone and looked at all of the physical attributes of the printer. I've replaced this belt. I switched the belts because this is the newer belt. If you will remember in an older video, I had a problem with the belt. So this is a different belt than the other two. So I tried flipping the belts. It's not the belt problem. Uh, I really didn't think it was, but I'm just trying everything. Uh, we've already seen how I replaced the rods, trying to think that that, that could be the problem. That's not the problem. I've, I've got my limit, uh, the, the, the switches, the limit switches adjusted to where uh, they're very accurate. Um, so there's really nothing physical that can explain that three millimeters, 2.75 millimeters uh, of, of, of variance across the board. Um, so it, it, it has to be in software. It can't be anywhere else. And um, I just, I've been, over the, I've been over the build of Marlin uh, a lot, and I can't find where that problem is coming from. So what I'm gonna try to do now is download the latest version of Marlin, that's 1.1.5, uh, and I'm gonna rebuild with that latest version, and hopefully uh, this, this, uh, the bed leveling problem maybe got fixed with the latest version, or maybe as I rebuild it, I will uh, figure out my mistake. But um, it's just very weird that I've got the whole sensor working because all I'm touching is the configuration.h for the most part. Um, you know, I'm not actually in there in the nuts and bolts of the, of the algorithm that, that, that computes all the bed values and yet I'm off like this. So it might not be uh, a problem uh, originating from the user here. Uh, it might be uh, a problem with Marlin. I don't know. Um, most likely it's, it's user error. It always is. Uh, one little kind of side note, while I was trying to track down what the problem could possibly be, I figured out that my sensor does this. So over here on the, uh, on the Creality, I'm printing a new uh, mount for that BL Touch. And I gotta say the Creality, I'm super impressed with the CR10 there. Uh, straight out of the box, printing ABS, uh, it's just easy. Um, not like all of my other printers where I just spent hours and hours trying to get them right. That thing, I just set it up and just started using it. So pretty cool. So yeah, that's about it. Uh, I'm still going to get this done, but I just wanted to give everyone an update about the, uh, the auto mesh bed leveling. Yeah. Stay tuned. Uh, I'll get it eventually. All right.